Green light means it's not charging, and if I connect it, the red light means that it's charging, and the charging brick is actually warm. Red light, check. Connected, check. No LED indicates charging. Doesn't turn on. And still doesn't turn on. So, the Inmotion V8 died on me. Let me tell you more about it. Broadway. First of all, also huge thanks to cleverboard.pl because these are actually also the guys that got me into the electric unicycle world. The first wheel I've ever tried was a Inmotion V10 I've, I've got for testing and immediately fell in love with electric unicycling and I got a Inmotion V5, then the Galway Nikola and the story went on and on. So huge thanks for getting me into unicycling and for letting me test this in Motion V8. Also, all the links are naturally in the description. But as you saw in the intro, I'm sort of halfway through my usual testing of electric devices and the V8F sort of died on me. And before I get into the process of troubleshooting and finding out what is really wrong with the wheel, if it's just a matter of resetting it or re reconnecting the battery or, you know, checking the fuses, uh, I know that this process might get a little long. So uh, before the full review of the Emotion V8F, I want to give you my impressions of riding it, uh, the range test results, the hill climbing and so on. So let's get into that. So the, the Inmotion V8F is a small upgrade to the Inmotion V8. It is a 16 inch wheel with a 2.25 or 2.125, let me check. Yeah, 2.125 inch wide tire. So it's a little wider than the original V8. It has a 518 watt hour big battery, that's 84 volt. And it has a more powerful motor at 1000 watts nominal power. So it does have a bigger battery, but it also has a more powerful motor, meaning it, the, the range difference might not be really so huge. I did a single range test with this wheel on this wheel. I did around 29 kilometers where the last two kilometers were on really, really heavy tilt back. You can see all the stats on the screen now, so you can see what like what speed I was cruising at. Basically, it was um, maybe a bit of a um, intense, yeah, intense. That's the word. Range test. I was doing also a bit of hill climbing and having fun with the wheel. All in all, this is a very fun wheel, so I would imagine that you would ride like this as well. After riding around 27 kilometers, the wheel suddenly <laughs> tilted me back so hard. I was riding 25 to 30 kilometers, uh, even when the wheel was showing me 0% battery left, 
and then suddenly it tilts you back so the tilt back is not like really gradual uh, so you go like 15 kilometers an hour when you are really low on battery but you can still go really really fast actually for this amount of battery so suddenly I had a huge tilt back and I still had to get home uh, this wasn't like a feature I really liked about the V8F. Anyhow, the new motor means that it is zippier. Sadly, I don't have a zero to 30 time to show you because I didn't make it yet. You will have to wait for the full on review of these things to find out about it. But I did do some hill climb tests. So here are the results of the hill climbing tests. Okay, so now we are at my first hill climb location. This is a 25, around 25 degree hill. So this was the limit for the in-motion uh, V8 before. Let's see how the V8F performs. And just to spice things up, I'm gonna go down and go up backwards. So as you can see, I can climb the hill 25 degrees quite easily, but uh, I'm not sure if a heavier person would uh, climb such a hill as well, because I can feel that slowly I'm overpowering the wheel. Really close to here is a 35 degree hill. Let's check that out real quick. So interestingly, so this is my 35 degree hill. This is the actual limit of the Gotway Nikola 84 volt and 100 volt. Let's see if the emotion can do it. I think you could very clearly see that 35 is too much for this wheel, but still we have to check 30, right? So let's go to this location. Okay guys, so we have just arrived at the, the Hill of Doom. I don't have too much battery left, but I think it should be plenty to just go up this hill. Okay, so it did it, which is awesome, but I really was on the edge of overpowering the wheel. As it is, as I weigh 75 kilograms, and I just have like 40% of battery, I'm not sure if I can get it home from here. It did pretty well. So cool. Thumbs up for in motion. The top speed of this wheel is 35 kilometers an hour, and I consider it to be really zippy, really, really zippy around uh, the city. But it does have its limits. So on my Nikola and on my MSS, these are like wheels that it's really hard to overpower. Even the Kingston KS16X, if you drive below 30 kilometers an hour. And here I believe that especially if you are a heavier rider, you might overpower the wheel when braking or when uh, accelerating. So a thing to note is if you want to start off with this wheel and you weigh above, I don't know, 85, 90 kilograms, then maybe consider a more powerful wheel as your first one, because uh, once, you're, once you get over your first 50 or 100 kilometers on the wheel, you might 
uh, you might find that this wheel is not powerful enough to keep up with your braking and your acceleration. Still, because it's so light, it weighs around 14 kilograms, it's awesome to explore like parks with or I don't know, like trails, because it's just so easy to maneuver. It You can basically like stand on it without getting your foot down. It's so well balanced and so agile. So the main thing to take out here is that wherever you can go with your feet, I mean, unless it's going upstairs, you can go with the V8F. And for like small trails, very um, tight spaces, even going around on cycling paths, where the traffic density is really huge, the V8F might be even a better choice than a big heavy wheel like my MSS. The foot plates are also bigger than on the V8. These are very similar to the V10 uh, foot plates, but they are coated in sandpaper. So this is a really good option. And underneath that sandpaper, I think there's rubber, so it's also well cushioned. But I think that I really don't like about these pedals that they are so flat. Um, so uh, if they were more angled, I, I could definitely get a smaller turning circle on uh, the wheel and all in all the grip which be, would be just so much better. I hope that in future uh, V8s or like future in motion wheel, uh, wheels the pedals would be more tilted, the foot plates would be more, more tilted, angled like on the uh, V5F for example to have a way better grip on the wheel. I would find myself sometimes also just slipping my foot off to another side of the foot plate because it, they are just so flat. So this is a bummer. It's really comfortable though, but for a small zit zippy city commuter wheel, I would definitely prefer pedals that are more angled. Uh, a thing I like a lot though is uh, the wider cushioning for your legs. So you can actually hold the wheel, which I basically could not do on the V8, which means you will uh, brake better, you will climb better, accelerate, all these things are a huge upgrade on the V8F. And this is, in my personal opinion, even a better thing than the bigger foot plates. It still has a nice trolley handle. And because it's actually on the side of the V8, you can pretty much uh, put a backpack on the wheel and go grocery shopping with your automatized uh, shopping cart. That's really cool. And I do like the trolley handle, but uh, like getting it out is a bit finicky. I would probably leave it just a bit out to make it easier because once you put it in, it's in gloves, it's not so like easy to get it out. It also has front lighting, which is, well, sort of okay. And it sadly does have only just a small rear tail light. Um, this is a bummer in the V8. I think this should be definitely a upgrade in the future to have a decent brake light and decent rear tail light like on the V10 or the upcoming V11. The side RGBs also do sort of come around to the rear so you're still a bit visible. I really love the side RGBs. They are great. You can program them. I could add actually also use my presets I did before on my V10 on the V8. So it's like cross platform compatible. And there you can just make frame by frame your animation on the side LEDs, which is awesome. I love RGB in the V8 and the V10. I think it's great. And I really don't understand why they did not put it into the V11. Uh, you're just so well visible, it looks so cool, so futuristic, so modern, especially on the like sleek black look of the V8. Uh, it's awesome. And I really don't understand why they didn't put it on the V11. Anyhow, it also has a lift sensor. The grab handle is also really comfortable. It has a red rub rubberized button to turn it on and off. I think before it was black, but I guess who cares? It has a 1.5 amp charger, which charges it in four and a half hours from zero to 100 percent. And um, the pin is a weird port, actually. It is not a Lenovo port. It's something older. Uh, I think they should just change it to a GX16-4 port 
or a um, Lenovo port like they have on all the other wheels. I really like the new white tire. I like the trail capab capabilities of this wheel. The pedals are high off the ground. So uh, just to explain to you what happened, why it died on me. Oh, uh, it turned off. Uh, maybe it did overheat. Okay, we'll see about that. Uh, so sadly for me, it still doesn't turn on. I had, as said, maybe 30% of battery. And maybe the battery like level is just dropped way too low and yeah I just turned on the low discharge or low or overpowered protection because this was a pretty steep hill and just turned itself off so now I'm probably going for a small stroll and see if anything changes in like five to ten minutes By the way, that's also another lesson for you guys. Always take a charger with you, just in case something like this happens. I didn't take it today because I forgot about it. And this just goes to show you that you should always remember about it. So this might be a couple of things. It might be just a fuse. It might be just a matter of disconnecting and reconnecting the wheel. Uh, I mean the battery. I have to talk to a clever board about it. But for now, uh, this uh, makes this sort of a semi uh, review of the Inmotion V8F. I really do like this wheel, but if you want to get this wheel, make sure you're uh, under 90 kilograms. That's what uh, Jan Svoboda uh, said in a recent video. He knows his wheels, so go listen to, to him. And also the price makes a huge, plays a huge part here because the wheel is for around a thousand bucks now uh, on sale at local distributors. And for not a, a lot more and even for cheaper, you can get a Godway MCM5, uh, which has a way bigger battery than uh, the V8F, but it doesn't have the trail capabilities of the V8F. Uh, and for a bit more like $1,100, $1,200, you can get the Galway Tesla V2, which is basically like a V10 uh, wheel with a way bigger battery and yeah, it's and, and speakers actually, Bluetooth speakers, because uh, this wheel does only tell you the voice prompts and it doesn't play the music. So if you want to get this wheel for like the sleekness and all in all design, good choice but if you want to have the most bang for your buck you have to keep an eye out for deals on this wheel or just get a Galway MCM5 or Tesla V2. So if you're still here leave a like on the video subscribe to see more content like this I'll see you in the next video see you soon oh and you might be curious if something like this ever happened to me on a Galway wheel <laughs>